The following sports broadcast made possible by support from the following. The Bear Family McDonald's, proud supporters of our community since 1967. Stop by one of their 30 area McDonald's restaurants today. Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland. Featuring sales, installation, and 24-hour emergency service. Find them online at customheating.com. Custom Heating and Cooling, powered by Bryant, whatever it takes. Rosen Hyundai of Algonquin. Looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time. Shop online at rosenhyundai.com. Tom the Plumber is a family-owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. Visit Tom online at tomthepluminc.com. And Daryl Barnes Photography. For all your photographic needs, senior portraits, family portraits, sports, and more. Visit Daryl online at darylbarnes.com. and the Grand Bulldogs. But first, this game brought to you by our season sponsor, the Bear Family McDonald's. Proud supporters of our community since 1967. Stop by one of their 30 area McDonald's restaurants today. Now, Patrick, we've seen Streamwood play. We haven't seen so much of Grant. Who are your, your players to watch for this game? Well, you're going to look for number 34, Mikhail Ashley. He's got nine twos, ten threes, and near perfect from the line, 14 of 15. He can work around all the court. 62 total points, he's a two-sport athlete, a baseball player, and he committed in baseball to Johnson County Community College. Also look for number 22, Chad Keeson. He's got five twos, five threes, 12 and 15 from the line, 37 total points. He hits three threes against Prairie Ridge. Now Grant's one and two in full play. They beat our alma mater, South Elgin High School, 57 to 52 to come into the Constellation B Championship. So. So let's see those two players. They're gonna need Mikhail Ashley. That's gonna be the guy. That's gonna be the key player to look out for. You were heard to hear from my trusted partner Patrick. And starting lineups for each team for Streamwood, you have number 11, Kyle Mapron, number 12, Andrew Fan, number 13, Lorenzo Coney, number 23, Jacoby Strong, and number 33, Luke Pentecost. Patrick, what's the starting lineup for Grant? For Grant Community High School, you're gonna have number four, Luke Bendrosian, number 22, Trad Calgason, number 25, Randall Holm, 32, Carter K, and number 34, Mikhail Ashley. And moments away from tip-off here, I want to remind you that this first quarter is sponsored by Rosen Hyundai of Algonquin. Looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time. Shop online at RosenHyundai.com. And we are off. Grant will win the tip-off. Number 34, Mikhail Ashley. All down. And he will pass it to Chad Keaton. Back to Ashley. Number 25, Randall Holm. Keegan wide open for three. That one's good. And first blood struck by the Grand Bulldogs. Strong with the ball. The pass to number 12, Andrew Fan. That one's up and off the rim. And Streamwood will try and get the rebound, and they will. Pentecost to. That is Coney, and Pentecost for three right off the rim as well. Strong with the putback, and that one's good, too. You're going to see a lot of three chances for Pentecost. He's gotten, as I said, 14 threes. He leads the team in threes, so look to see him behind the arc for Streamwood. And number four with the layup, Luke Bedrosian with the layup. Grant Streamwood take it back the other way. Mabron to Strong behind the arc to Pentecost. Pentecost to Fan. And back to Pentecost, and Strong on the other side. That one's up, and just bounces out. You're going to see Streamwood working around the arc a lot. As you know, Pentecost, and we keep saying his name. It's definitely a guy I want to look for, but a lot of other guys on his team can shoot threes as well. It's all the coach of Streamwood just fired up. And this time out, brought to you by our good friend, Tom the Plumber. Tom the Plumber Inc. is a family-owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing, plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. 
visit Tom online at TomThePlumberInc.com. We're about a minute through here as Grant already leads Streamwood 7-2. And we have a replay of the three-point here. You saw Kingston calling for the ball. He got it, and he took that shot. Abram taking that for Stewart. Looking for a lane to pass to, and he'll find Coney. Coney, fan, bobbles pass a little bit and then handles it. Mabron. Mabron up for three, and that one bounces out, and Grant will take it back the other way. Keegan with it now. You're going to see Streamwood trying to get the three ball working, especially in the first quarter. If it doesn't work, they're going to start driving in. It's Carter K with the give off to Gedrosian. And that one does not connect. Streamwood pulling back the other way. Tony to Pentecost for three, and that one's through. Pentecost, a big three point threat for Streamwood. He gets another one there. And deep Gedrosian in alone, and he'll put up the layup. I don't, I, I don't know what Streamwood was doing there on defense. They're just caught sleeping. Abram, Tony with it. And he'll take it himself for three, and that one bounces out. Ashley with the rebound, he'll take it back the other direction for Grant. Ashley to Bedrosian, and there is a foul, looks like on Lorenzo Coney of Streamwood. I mean, we saw Streamwood earlier in the tournament playing Barrington. You, we both remember how many fouls that Streamwood had in that game. So a big portion of what they're going to try doing in this one is trying to limit the fouls in as little as possible. So you, you don't want to get you don't want to get uh, Grant into the double bonus or the bonus, especially early in the game. There's 75 percent. Ashley puts that one up and it just falls in. You know, that was that was one of those shots where it just hits, sits on the rim and everyone's sitting there with anticipation. They don't know if it's going to go in or not. Run around back and he'll give it to Fan. Fan tries to drive in. He'll swing a pass off to loose to Strong. Strong to Coney. Coney back to Strong. Strong puts it up from mid range and does not call. And Stream with the rebound. And Loose will keep it in. He'll give it to Fan. Fan to Coney. Coney with a short pass to Strong. Strong to the other side from Mabern. Mabern to drive in and to Strong. Strong waits and good patience there by Strong, but it was still taken away by number 25, Randall Holm of Grant. Well, they, they did call a foul on that, and I don't know if Grant was going for... It, it looked it looked like, it, to me, it looked like it was all ball. I don't know if there was a little more contact. It looked like Ashley may have gotten involved there and that was his foul. He may have hit the hand, but I... It looked all ball to me, it looked clean. And Strong will make his first free throw. Streamwood 66.7% from the line this tournament, 44 for 46, a perfect two out of three. And Strong's second will make it. And Graham will get this now, a four point game here with 4.52 left in the first. Richard Santiago of Streamwood checked in. Ashley now, and he'll get the pass off to Carter K. And Holm with it now, he'll go up. That one off the rim, Bedrosian with the rebound. He can't put that one through. Bedrosian picks up his own rebound and puts the third one through. Those offensive rebounds, the most, other than free throws, the most important part of high school basketball. Maybe in a little physical play to get up to the net, you cannot put it through, and that one will go out of bounds. Like that, that possession by Grant, when we go back to that, the key, you, you, you like to get as much chances as you can with one possession. They got three right there. It's a huge play. And some substitutions in almost Grant's entire team. Leaving the court as we have three substitutions. Team number five, Michael Saavedra in the game. As Pentecost gets a good victory point. Keegs in with it now for he loses the ball to Coney and it looks like we're going to get a foul here on Streamwood so that's a um, foul on Grant and Streamwood will get the ball back Pentecost to Mabern Mabern deep underneath to Loose Loose to Coney Coney to Pentecost Pentecost swings one out to Mabern Mabern for three and that one just goes off Coney looking to get the put back and couldn't get it there and we would go out of bounds. I, I liked 
what Mabram did there. He he faked the pass. He fooled Grant into thinking that he was gonna, he was passing it off to the wing, and instead just took the three himself. Mabram uses it to loose underneath. Loose finds Coney open for three, and that one bounces off the unlucky rim as we dubbed it earlier. The unforgiving rim. Rears its ugly head again. And number five, Saavedra with it now. And a deep pass out to Saavedra. I'm sorry, that was, um, was Jalen Reeves with the ball. The ball almost came all the way up to us here. <laughs> I, I had my hands out. I was ready for it. And if they would have let me, I definitely would have been draining a shot from up here. No doubt in my mind. I drained a shot last year in that little uh, cherry thing they did. And khakis and all. And Pentecost for three. And this man's automatic from behind the arc. That is his third three of the game, Luke Pentecost. And Grant coming back the other way, loose with a block. And he'll give it back Stream of Pony coming back. And Mabron takes a shot and doesn't actually. And the putback is good by Coney. There was just no one guarding Coney. Just sat there, he took his time, got the rebound, looked around, he's like, well, there's just no one here. I'll just put it up. And he and puts it right in. Ashley coming back for Grant. And ball stolen by Coney. Coney coming back the other direction for Streamwood. And he will find Pentecost open for three. And that one's off the back of the rim. And Mayburn will have it now. Coney looking for a place to go, and he'll drive in. Pass deflected off from the Grant player. A little bit of a mess as number 25, Holm, comes back with the ball. And no whistle here. We play on as Keegan the ball. Coney looks like he'll get a foul. May have grabbed too much there. Yeah, Coney, Coney reached in a little too far in. He, 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 was, he, he was good intention. He was going for the ball, but reaching fouls are ones that even the best players make. And Keegan. Keegan will throw the ball in, flex off a Coney, and this one will change possession. It looked like it actually went off on a Grant player since so it's not Streamwood ball. Strong with it now. Ten yard looking. And loose from behind the arc to Pentecost. Pentecost goes up for three and cannot drain another one. That one goes off the side of the rim as this ball rolls out of play. He tried, he, he wasn't set, he tried doing the fadeaway. Fadeaways are a lot harder to make than actually setting your feet and taking the three, but it was worth the try. I mean, he's been hot all day. He's hit three threes already in the first quarter. And Coney with the ball, looking for a place to go, and he'll find Pentecost. Pentecost is strong. Strong to... And Pentecost back to the, um, Coney. He's number 10, Richard Santiago. Boy. And Coney with him now up to three. That one bounces out, and Grant will take it back the other way. And Ashley with it for Grant. Finds Drosian. And he's getting with it. Looking for a place to go, and he'll stay behind the line as Ashley takes it. Ashley puts this one up. That one's deflected by Lorenzo Coney. As the ball rolls out of bounds, and it looks like Ashley will line up for couple of free throws. Yeah, he is near automatic, 14 of 15 from the line. And he throws his first. Actually the best player for Grant in the tournament, having 62 total points. As he lines up for a second. And that one also goes through, and that makes it a tie game at 15. Strong to Santiago for stream, but Santiago looking for a place to go, and he'll find Coney. Coney to Pentecost. Pentecost spins it back to Coney. Pentecost had a look there. I'm surprised he didn't take it, by the way. He's been shooting all day. Coney will drive in, goes up, and that one's off the backboard. Loose takes it with the putback, and he cannot get that one. That one goes off the other side. Bedrosi with the rebound for Grant, and he'll take it back. It looked like Coney and Luce were both going at it down low. I don't know if they didn't see each other there, but, I mean, Luce would have had the easy putback, but Coney just interfered. Ashley with it from mid-range, and he cannot put that one through. Santiago taking it back for Stream with the pass to Strong deep. Strong back to Santiago behind the arc, and to Strong, and to Coney. Coney up for three. That one does not connect. And Luce to Santiago. Santiago Strong, Strong just in front of the arc and cannot get that one through. And that one will be taken by Grant's coach as it falls out of bounds. 
And some substitutions for Streamwood. Mayburn back in the game now for number 10, Santiago. As Pentecost will take the inbound pass. And he will give it to Pony. Pony to Mayburn. Mayburn takes a look for three, fakes it, and goes in. And he'll put that one up for two. And that, at, with 30 seconds left in the first quarter, Ashley, deep pass to number 32. That's Carter K. And he will give it to Bedrosian. Bedrosian from the free throw line. That one's good. And Grant will tie this one up at 17, 25 seconds left in the quarter. That's Pony Bedrosian's eighth point of the game. Pony will drive in and get two. And these teams trade in twos as the quarter starts to draw to a close. And Grant take the inbound pass. Oh! And Zavedra got nailed by Luke Pentecost on that play. And he will get up. Zavedra took a huge hit there as we have a replay coming to you. So that pass just, Pentecost Zvedra. goes in. I don't know if you, I mean, he was going for the ball and just really laid out Zvedra Mikhail Sandoval. The pass in the air. He got nailed. He will stay in the game for Greg. It's Ashley. Looks like there will be a foul there on Pentecost. Pentecost tied up Ashley. Zavedra yeah, looks like he's still hurting from that hit. Walking a little gingerly now. 7.5 seconds left and Greg will have a chance to put one more play here. And we'll get some substitutions here. Keeskin and K, or I'm sorry, Keeskin and that is Number 25, Holm, back in the game for Grant. Pedrosian will take the inbound pass, and he'll give it to Keeskin. Keeskin, a high pass to Ashley, and that one is deflected as there is a whistle with 1.4 seconds left on the clock. Looked like that was a kick ball violation, and a costly turnover for the final shot of the first quarter, it's going to be Streamwood's ball. Streamwood in their own zone with 1.4 seconds left to go. Pentecost up for three, and that one does not connect just short as Pentecost tries the buzzer beat in three and does not get it. And with that, we will go to commercial with Streamwood leading Grant. What makes me most proud of our restaurants is our people. Our people who come in and work for us every single day. We try to create an atmosphere of, of family, an atmosphere of warmth, and an atmosphere of compassion. And we are back here at Jacobs High School Gym, start of the second quarter here. Thanks again to our sponsor, Rosen Hyundai of Algonquin. Looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time. Shop online at RosenHyundai.com. And don't forget this game brought to you by our season sponsor, the Bear Family McDonald's. Proud supporters of our community since 1967. Stop by one of their 30 area McDonald's restaurants today. Now, Patrick, a tight game here as we start the second. Streamwood only up two to Grant. What do you want to see Grant improve on? Take well, back? they got to find a way to stop Pentecost. He's hit three threes already in the first quarter. See, I mean, he's only going to hit more as the game progresses. So find some way to stop Streamwood from giving the ball to Pentecost behind the arc. Also, try to find a way to work in a little more. Give the ball to Luke Bedrosian. He's got eight points. I mean, try to get a little three game working if you can. Give it to Keeganson. He hit a three earlier. Just work on that. And that pass from Mayburn a little to Asiano Patch. You mentioned the three point shots. And Streamwood actually has the most threes in the tourney by any team, 48 as the tournament progresses. And Pentecost has been a big part of that. Now Ashley will take the inbound pass for Grant. And Ashley will take it down. Pass the Eagle to Keeskin. Keeskin now working in from behind. And he will drive in and give a pass to Ashley. Open for three. And that one bounces out. As Dreamwood takes it back loose to Mayburn the other way. Too strong. Strong drives in, goes up, and puts that one through for two as Streamwood extends their lead to four. Yeah, Streamwood has Grant thinking of stopping a three. I mean, I said they're gonna try stopping the three, but what that does is open up down low, and I expect Streamwood to take full advantage of that already, as they already have. That as number 32, Carter K, tied up for Grant, we will get a foul call. Oh, 
Streamwood sitting around six fouls already in the game. One of those teams that played aggressive. We saw it against Barrington. And it's showing again today. Keeskin with the ball for Grant. And he will pass it. I don't know if he was going for himself. Looks like it's strong coming back the other way. Mabern up for two, and that one goes through. It looks like Keeskin was trying to get that pass off, and it just didn't connect, and Streamwood, Streamwood took advantage. That was definitely a strange one. And Keeskin going back the other way, and he'll put that one through for two. We'll go to the line for one more. As Grant comes within four, 23-19. Here's, here's something you want to look out for. Luke Pentecost has three fouls already in the game. Now five is where you foul out in high school basketball. So they might they might need to sit him a little more, take him out of the game, which is definitely going to hurt Streamwood's game. Keeskin's free throw goes off the rim, and Mabern takes it back for Streamwood. Mabern goes up, and it looks like we will get a whistle before the shot. And it looks like that will be a foul as Mabern will take the pass. Mabern looking, finds high pass to Strong behind the arc. And Strong will close in and tries to go up. He puts that one up for two, and it looks like this will be an and one play for Jacob Strong. Yeah, Keekson was moving around with his hands up, drawed contact from Strong, and did all he could to stop it, but it still went in. Strong will made his first two free throws, and he will get a chance at a third here. As that one falls out, no good, and we will get a whistle just as Streamer takes the rebound. Looks like, yeah, there will be a jump ball, and the possession arrow is pointing towards the offensive side of Grant, so they'll get the ball. And Ashley will take this in for Grant. The pass to Bedrosian, over to Keeskin. Keeskin back to Bedrosian. Bedrosian to Kay. Kay looking for a place to go, and he will give a pass to Bedrosian open underneath. Bedrosian, Carter K to Ashley. Ashley looking for a place to go, and he will take a three-point shot, and that one goes off the rim. Bedrosian takes the rebound, goes up, and does not connect, and we will get a stoppage. Yeah, it looks like Bedrosian will go to the line for two. Actually, yeah, he will be at the line for two. That's Streamwood's eighth foul. They're only two away from getting into that double bonus. So guarantee every foul. Whoever the foul is upon will get two chances at the line. And the Jersey's first free throw is making this a five point game. Stream with 25, Grant 20, 6 22 left in the second. As Bedrosian lines up for his second. And that one also goes through as Luce takes it back to Streamwood to Mabern. I just want to take a second here. Lorenzo Coney looked like he was trying to get Bedrosian to look his way. He looked like he was about to fall over into, into, uh, into the paint, but. It didn't phase Bedrosian as he made the second one. Mabern now to number 10, Richard Santiago to Coney. I, mean, I, I got to respect the move on that one. I mean, it's definitely something I've never seen. I've seen players put their hands up and wiggle their fingers around to try to get the shooter to get distracted, but I've never seen something like that. Strong will send that one up to loose. Mayburn for three. That one's through. I actually thought on that um, free throw that um, Pony was worried about moving too early before, um, before the shot got off. That's what it looked like to me. Maybe he was just trying to distract the Josie. Because as soon as he, sh he shot it, he just stood straight up like he was almost like a prank. And he's getting for three, and that one goes through. And Grant puts them within five or within four, I'm sorry. And Coney up for three, and they respond. Big three by Lorenzo Coney. As Streamwood extends their lead back seven. And that pass out to Keeskin by Holm. Keeskin to Holm to Ashley. Ashley has the three-point look and takes it, and that one air bailed out as Mayburn does a deep pass to Coney. Coney Drives in, sends the pass to Strong. Strong from mid-range, and that one bounces off the rim. Strong tries to get his own rebound and does. And Santiago, just in front of the three-point arc, does not connect. As Grant comes back the other way, that is Carter K with it. 
to Kiesgen. Kiesgen goes up and off the rim. And Stream Oconee had a breakaway back the other way. And he put he tries the dunk and does not connect as Greg comes back. Carter K. That is number four, Luke Jersey, and, and we will get a stoppage. Coney on that big breakaway by Streamwood and just doesn't connect. Patrick, what do you see here? We have replay. He has the open lane. Looks like he lost the ball. He's trying to go for the one-handed slam and just rolled off his fingers. You'll hear it from his team the rest of the tournament. And Santiago too strong. And Mabern up for three, and he puts that one through as he ends up on the floor. And that's what you're just gonna see all game from Streamwood. Just threes, threes, forever. Mabern with his 10th point with the 10th point with that three, as Ashley with the ball now for Grant, and the three by Carter K goes through. Grant gets there and on Streamwood's three. Four minutes left in the half. Mabron. And Mayburn will just put it up for three, and he puts that one through. These teams are trading threes right now. Mayburn, a big factor for Streamwood. They sat Pentecost, as you said, close to fouling out. And Mayburn with 13 points so far. Looks like there's a, a technical call. And not the guy you want to yeah, technical Yeah, technical on Mayburn as a little head make Ashley go to the line for two unattested free throws. Now, I don't know if this is just from what I've seen, but I mean, Mikhail Ashley's basically hundred near perfect at the line, but other players, especially in technicals, they have trouble making the free throws without anyone else being there. I don't know if it's just like a mind game or whatnot, but definitely something but I haven't seen. Not a problem for Ashley as he drains both of his free throws. And Keesgen will take the inbound pass here for Grant. And Keesgen will find Saavedra. Saavedra to Ashley. Ashley to Keesgen. Keesgen starts to drive in and goes up for two and cannot put that one in. Bounces off the rim. Mayburn coming back the other direction. Mayburn a big part of Streamwood game. Pass to Coney for three, and that one goes through. Streamwood getting hot to end the second quarter here. They take an 11 point lead over the Bulldogs. Hey, just, just got a report from the weather, man. It's raining threes out here. I have never seen more threes in a game, especially in the first half. And Ashley coming up and charge. He puts through the layup as we will get a foul call. A charge foul. It looked like Daryl Luce was set. Ashley decides to drive in, loose, loose set, and bolts his feet, and then took the charge. Did you play here in the charge? <laughs> oh, well, I don't really know about that. Loose looked like he was moving a little bit. Maybe the ref saw otherwise, but it looked like he wasn't completely set. And Mabron takes this in for Stewart. He will send a pass out deep to strong behind the arc. And he does not connect on the three-pointer as Santiago takes it to, that is, um, loose to, um, fan that was, I can't get his name right, as Streamwood lands another three. And we have a replay of that three by Richard Santiago, his first points of the game. It's open. I mean, this team shoots, as you said, Logan, they have the most threes of any other team in the tournament. And this timeout brought to you by Custom Heating and Cooling. Custom Heating and Cooling, for all your heating for all your heating or cooling needs, count on Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland, featuring sales, installation, and 24-hour emergency service. Find them online at customheating.com. Custom Heating and Cooling, powered by Brian, whatever it takes. Here, R. Kelly's ignition playing here in the stadium <laughs> as Streamwood has turned on the ignition against Grant, uh, a 14 point lead, <laughs> 43 to 29, with 2.41 left in the second. Patch, you groaned, I was pretty proud of that one. I mean, I, I gotta give you points for being clever. I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm just gonna let it slide. <laughs> Let's get back to basketball here, okay? <laughs> and the Bulldogs, <laughs> there's a reason I'm not a comedian, the Bulldogs will take this one back. 
looking for a place to go with the inbound pass. He'll find Keyskin, and that will be a five-second violation. You have five seconds to take the inbound pass, and he takes a bit too long there as Streamwood will get the ball here, Mabry. This good press defense there by Streamwood. Couldn't find Mabry anyone. Will find Strong in, and he cannot connect on the two-point shot. Who's backing up here to Mabry. Mabry looking, two and a half minutes left here in the second. Looking, he'll find Strong. Strong dancing around the three-point arc here. As he'll find Mabron open for three, and he does not even get the rim on that one. That one going nowhere as we get a whistle and play. And this looks to be a foul on Streamwood, as Bedrosi will take the inbound pass for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Streamwood's head coach was was yelling at the ref. He's like, "Hey, Mabron was hit from behind in the three. That's why he went down." But apparently, the ref just said, "Hey." I saw all ball. I didn't see any kind of contact right there. And Stream would train players to take this pass. Eventually settle with Mabron. As Mabron with a deep pass out to Santiago. Ball in play now. Santiago loses the ball, and Grant will take it back the other way. Keesgan with it. He'll swing the pass out to Holm. Holm to Bedrosian. Bedrosian to Zavedra. Zavedra up for three. And that one off the back of the rim as Holm handles the ball and takes down number 12, Andrew Fan of Streamwood. That yeah, fan's not set, that will be a blocking foul. And we'll send, we'll send a Grant to the line for two, because they are in the double bonus now, so you're guaranteed two free throws, no matter what kind of foul. Home with two points in the game, and he will get a chance to add two more to it, as Streamwood in the double bonus with 10 fouls in the half. And his first one is there. 43 30, um, Streamwood in the lead. Grant trying to cut into that lead here with these free throws. Yeah, it'll be very important for Grant to make these free throws and they want to come back at all. Maybe work some three pointers along as well. And Mayburn coming back for Streamwood. Streamwood pass to Mayburn. Mayburn finds Strong behind the arc. Strong puts it up for three, and that one off the back of the rim, and it is taken back by Coney behind the arc who will find Strong underneath. Strong will give it back to Coney up high as he goes for that three and does not connect. And a little bit of contact there between Fan and Holm as we get a whistle. There we go, back to the line for Grant. Streamwood's gonna need to limit the fouls as much as possible the next minute and 40 seconds. I mean, I don't wanna keep saying it, but I am. But Grant, 75% from the line. This is not a team you wanna have in the bonus or the double bonus. And Holm made both of his free throws his first time out, and he will get another chance here, and he joins the third. Some substitutions coming in for Grant. That is number four, Luke Bedrosian, and number 21, Neil Hudson. Nudson, I'm sorry, now in the game. As Holm lines up for his second free throw, and makes that one as well. Mayburn coming back, stream looks lead at 10, and he will put it up and make that 12. As Mabron, top scorer for Streamwood so far. There's this Swiss cheese defense for Grant Community High School right there. They and just let Mabron go in. Fedrick did not get a hand on it as he sent it to Bedrosio, and we were getting a whistle. And that one's going back the other way. Yeah, Bedrosio was kind of fidgeting with the ball a little bit. Ref saw his feet move. He was hesitating where to throw it, where to, if he to take the shot or not. So we got the travel. Streamwood attempted to extend their lead back here, Mabron with it to, that is Juan Torre. Ryan Torre, I'm sorry, now in the game for Streamwood. As number 32, Carter K takes it back for Grant, gives it to Holm. Holm goes up for two, takes Mabron down with him. It will be a charge. And that will be a charge. As Streamwood will take it back. The inbound pass to Mabron. Mabron to Coney. A minute left here. And Luce lost the ball there, and we get a whistle as this one will. Looks like we'll send Luce to the line. Yep. Streamwood now in the bonus. We'll have a one and one. Luce, no points in the game so far. We'll have a chance to get two off of free throws, number 25. 
that is looks like we do not have him here. And that is Randall Holm, I'm sorry, out of the game and substitution in his place. Looks to be Ashley. Pedrosian with the ball looking and he'll find um Heesgen. Heesgen to Pedrosian and Luce breaks that one up and it looks like that will be out on Grant. It looked to me like Luce was the last one to touch that ball. And we, he and was. He was, as that out is called on stream when not Grant. It's my mistake. Yeah, one of the refs looked for the other one, said, hey, did it go out on stream one? He pointed and said, sure did. And Bedrosian taking the inbound pass to Ashley. Ashley going up and cannot connect. Strong taking it back the other way for stream with 30 seconds left. He'll give a drop pass to Mayburn. Mayburn does not connect for two. And Grant taking it back. He's getting Pass goes back to Keyson. Keys going up for three. That one goes through. And that's, Mabron. And that's exactly what, what you want to see for Grant. You want to see that in the second half. Mabron driving in, trying to find the lane and does not. Now Coney going up contested. And it looks like that will be a foul on Bedrosian. Grant. And that will send Coney to the line. Ten points on the afternoon already for Coney. And lines up for his first free throw of the game. That one bounces out. Looked like it was going in the um, unforgiving rim, as we call it. Yeah, we've seen the whole tournament. Just all's going in now, ringing around the rim, not going in. It's cursed. When his second free throws missed, and Luce can put that one back up for two. And the buzzer beater's up. That was Carter K of Grant, does not connect on the three points. And we will go to the half with Streamwood, an 11 point lead on the Grant Bulldogs. Sabres 47, Bulldogs 36. And we will go to break. We'll be back right after this. Think I've got no reason to give myself a right to share what I believe in. Ooh, ooh, they say I've got an issue, always on the edge, cause I don't trust but I don't need your word and what I'm into. What makes me most proud of our restaurants is our people. Our people who come in and work for us every single day. We try to create an atmosphere of, of family, an atmosphere of warmth, and an atmosphere of compassion. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Bear Family McDonald's. Thank you.
everyone, welcome back to the Jacobs High School Gym here for the Hinkle Holiday Classic where we have the streaming savers on top of the Grand Bulldogs at the half of 47 to 36. And we were talking about this game, threes, threes, and more threes. We have some replays coming up for you, folks. It's wide open, Mabram. There's one. He has been on fire this entire game. Lead stream wouldn't point this game with 15. I believe we have a couple other replays coming your way. This one, a 3.5 grant. It is a contested three by, by Keekson. He's hit two threes already in the game, so keep an eye on him if you're, uh, if you're Grant. If you're Streamwood, keep an eye on him. I mean, they, I can see Grant getting the ball a little bit more, working behind the arc. He's shown he can shoot. Let him. And the last one we have here is another Streamwood three. This one by Lorenzo Cole. Nobody there. Just wide open. Now, Patrick, Grant trails Streamwood right now in this game by 11 points. And it's, we've seen teams come back from more. We saw Jefferson yesterday with their amazing 18-point comeback against Crystal Lake South. What do the what do the Bulldogs need to do to get back in this game? Well, they, I, I say work a little bit beyond, be, beyond excuse me, <laughs> English, behind the arc. Give Jack Kingis in the ball. He's made two threes already. Let Carter K shoot a little bit more than the arc. He made one three, but also, Try to find Mikhail Ashley down low. He has four points for Luke Pedrosian. He's got nine. Both of those guys can work down low. We've seen Ashley. He's tried to shoot threes. He's been off behind the arc. Give him the ball down low. If he's not open, find Pedrosian down low. Those are the two guys you're going to want to give the ball to if you're Grant. Good to hear from our basketball extraordinaire. As he likes to call me. I think he's more of an expert than I am. Look, okay, I, I got uh, about... I think about six years of Park District basketball under my belt. I mean, you can clarify m me as a uh, having a PhD in basketballology. And as we have 40 <laughs> seconds left in <laughs> halftime here, I want to remind you, this game brought to you by our season sponsor, the Bear Family McDonald's. Proud supporters of our community since 1967. Stop by one of their 30 area McDonald's restaurants today. And our friends at Rosen Hyundai. Algonquin, looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time, shop online at rosenhyundai.com. As we will get the starting lineups of the second half, look very similar to the starting lineups of the first half. For stream would be at number 11, I'm Kyle Mabron. Number 12, Andrew Fan. Number 13, Lorenzo Coney. Number 24, Daryl Luce. And number 33, Luke Pentecost. For Grant, you have number four, Luke Bedrosian. Number 22, Chad Keegson. Number 25, Randall Holm. Number 32, Carter K. And number 34, Mikhail Ashley. And we are ready to kick off the second half here. Now, I just want to say something. This is completely unrelated to basketball, but these Grant jerseys are probably my favorite we've seen in the tournament so far. Something about red and black. Just being such a good combination. We had um, Johnsburg a couple days ago with the blue and yellow, and that was one that I really liked. I don't know, man. I don't think I agree with you on that one. I mean, Grant takes the cake right now. From what I've seen, what we've seen, it's the best jersey we've seen all tournament. And Strong, give this one to Pentecost. Pentecost, pass to Mabron. Mabron almost takes the look, pass to Tony. Pentecost up for three. That one's off the rim, and Luce will take that. He'll take it back. And Strong with it. Takes the look, gives it to Pentecost. Pentecost to Mabron. Stream of working behind the arc here, trying to get something done as Mabron drives in and is put against the wall as he passes it to Strong. Strong to loose. Strong drives in. This pass to Pentecost. Open for three. That one's off the rim. And Keeskin takes this for Grant. He'll go back the other direction. Now, Pentecost has been a little off, and part of that's due to sitting out most of the second quarter due to him being in foul trouble. He's got three fouls, two away from fouling out, so keep an eye out for that. Ashley rejected there by Jacob Strong coming in behind him, and it looks like Ashley will take this one in for Grant. And the jersey in with it to 32 Carter K. He's going up and in for three points. First points of the half here by Grant. Hey, if Keegson's open, give him the ball. He's now proved to all of us that he can shoot the three. If he's open, give it to him. Strong. 
with a hard pass to Mayburn. Mayburn goes up for three and bounces that one off the rim. Mayburn shooting his leading score of the day as Cody takes it. Looking, he'll find a lane and drive in. And he'll dish it out strong. He puts that one up for three and that one goes off the rim as Ashley gets it to Keeskin. He's in back to, back to Ashley. And he'll find Bedrosian. Pass the two out to him. He'll get it to Ashley. The stream has been a little off with their three point game. If that's not working, Grant should have a very good shot of getting back into this game. And Keeskin puts that one up for three and goes through. Two threes in the second half there for Keeskin. As we get a whistle here, Streamwood's lead cut to five. As it looks like we have a timeout called on Streamwood. Called by Streamwood, rather. And this timeout brought to you by our good friend Tom Plummer. Tom the Plumber Inc. is a family-owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. Visit Tom online at TomThePlumber.com. Now Patrick Grant has done a good job of cutting into Streamwood's lead here. Now they only trail by five. What do you want to see them do more to continue to cut into that lead? Well, give the ball to Keekson. He's made two threes in the third quarter, four all day. He's got a big looping shot. Give him the ball. Let him take the threes. If that's not working, give the ball to Bedrosian down low. Give the ball to Ashley down low. I mean, if you stop Streamwood behind the arc, you're, you're probably going to come back in this game. And Mabry dishes one out to Strong, and he'll put that one up for two. And Streamwood, that's what you want to do. If your three-point game's not working, work in. And Keeskin taking it back for Grant. He's going to find a lane and go up for two and does not connect as Ashley gets that ball and goes back up and also misses as it looks like Ashley will be sent to the line. Not the scenario you want to be in if you're streaming. Yeah, he's two for two from the line today. As I know, 14 to 15 from the tournament. Near automatic. Not the guy you want on the line. And he makes his first one. Scoring out 49-43 in favor of the Sabres. And Ashley's second free throw off the rim. That's something you see often as that ball rolls out of play. And that is out on Streamwood. The jersey will take the inbound pass. Yeah, it looked like Moose was a little amazed that they called it out on Streamwood. He, he thought that, that Grant was one that hit it out, but. Pass high for home, and he does not connect on two. Now Carter K with it. He'll go up, and that does not make it to the net as we get a stoppage. And that's a charge foul. Mavrum set his feet, took the charge, but you know, I I don't know why he didn't pass to Ashley. Ashley was open from the corner. He was waving his arms around, trying to call for the ball, but strong looking for a place to go with the ball, and that one's a little too much for Coney, and it looks like we were getting whistle here. And that's an over and back turnover here for Streamwood getting the ball right back to Grant. I mean, Streamwood. you gotta capitalize on these turnovers. Streamwood looking sloppy to start the third. See what Grant will continue to pay with the ball now. And he'll hand it off to Ashley. Ashley looking for a place to go. And a pass out to Keys going open for three. And does not put that one through as Mayburn coming back the other way for Streamer. He'll give it to Coney. Coney open for three. That one bounces off the rim. Ashley takes it back the other way. Ashley with a deep pass to Kay off of his hands. Coney has it now, taking it back the other way for Streamwood. And he'll put the layup off. It goes off the rim as Carter Kay open in for Grant now, and he puts that one up for two. A lot of back and forth there as Grant finally capitalizes. And Coney with it now puts that one up, and they respond. See a different change of pace here. Fast-paced basketball. Defenses don't have time to set and get ready. It's clearly working in the favor of Streamwood as that's a foul. And Ashley's pass to Bedrosian. Bedrosian will put that one up and we'll get a whistle as Bedrosian goes to the line. Now a six point game here, 51 to 45 in favor of the Streamwood Sabres. 432 left in the third. As Bedrosian lines up for his first free throw attempt. He's got two in the day already. And puts that one off the rim. Jersey in 
second attempt. Air mails it out. And Mabron taking it back the other way for Streamwood. And he'll line up for three and just go for it. And that one's off the rim. Ashley with the rebound. Taken by Strong. And that ball's that ball's loose on the court as Ashley gives it to Carter K of the Bulldogs. And K looking for a place to go. And she will find a man that's home underneath. But before that shot was off, it gets whistled, the play gets whistled dead as a timeout is called. The streamer will try to regroup here. This timeout brought to you by Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland. For all your heating or cooling needs, count on Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland featuring sales, installation, and 24-hour emergency service. Find them online at customheatingcool.com. Custom, Custom Heating and Cooling, powered by Bryant. Whatever it takes. That's a six-point game here, Grant. And Streamwood both looking a little sloppy to start the second half. What do you want to see from them moving forward? Well, Streamwood's tried to take a lot of threes this half. Pentecost, him being out of the game for such a long time, she's so played a role on him. And Mabram, he's not been hitting his shots. I want to see Streamwood work down low. I mean, you saw the change in pace. You saw Coney easy lane when there was a crazy amount of half-court passes going back and forth, work in for Streamwood and for Grant. I mean, Keegan missed the pass, but give him a, give him the shot again. It was a little out of his range, but that's just what you get. That's <laughs> a PA, forgot to turn off the music. <laughs> Ashley with it to Keegan. He's going up for three, and that one goes off the rim. He'll get it back himself, and he will try and drive it in as there is a stoppage. And be a foul. A that foul on Coney. That is his second foul of the day. Streamwood, one of the teams we know that fouls quite a lot with their aggressive play style. Ashley taking the inbound pass to Bedrosian. Bedrosian back to Ashley. And now Carter K with it. K acts like he's going to go up and then actually goes up and puts that one in for two. And that cost to lose, lose to Strong for Streamwood. Strong puts that one up, and that one's off the rim. Ashley takes the rebound to Keesgan now. Bedrosian deep. Bedrosian driving in and cannot finish as we get another foul call. Here we go again. Streamwood's got four fouls. I mean, we're, we're about, we're a little over midway through the fourth quarter, but you got, in the third quarter, you gotta be careful with these fouls. Bedrosian's three does not connect. And Graham will hold on. Ashley looking for it from mid-range. Puts that one up and through. And Grant chipping away at the stream of lead. Strong takes it now. Coney open for three, and that one's off the rim. And Keeskin with the weird-looking pass out to K, but it worked. And he can put that one up and does not connect. And Stream takes it back the other way. Strong with it now. And Mabron up and <laughs> Looks like someone on Grant got a hand on that ball. Looked like Holm to me. And that one is whistled as Drew will get the ball here. And you're going to see Pentecost leave the quarter again. He's got four fouls. He's one away from fouling out, and that's one of their best three-point shooters. Expect to see more Mabern with Pentecost out. That's what happened in the second quarter. Santiago up for two and puts that one through, extending Strewman's lead as Keeskin will take it. And Fan tries to get a hand on that one. And that will be ruled a foul on Grant. We're going to call it out of bounds. I mean, it looked like, I don't know if one of the Sabres got their hand on it. I mean, everyone in the area was fans. It looked to me like he got a hand on it. Holm was pointing at his jersey. I don't know if that meant it hit his jersey, if he was saying, or it hit the other guy's jersey. This is that Jordan Nudson in the game for Grant as Cody takes this for Streamwood. Looking and he will swing a pass off to Mabron up for three and he puts that one through. I don't know if that was intended to be a pass. It looked like he was going to try and shoot it. But otherwise, Mabron puts up the three. And that is Keesgan to Ashley. Ashley to Zavedra. Zavedra finds Keesgan open for three. Span's been nearly automatic from behind the arc and he puts another one through. Loose to Strong. That's his fifth three of Strong the game. Strong loses the ball. Bedrosian taking it back the other way. They'll find Ashley, and he will pause and put that one up for two. And that one goes just under the rim. 
as we get a whistle, and they will send Ashley to the line. And a good play by Ashley there to stop his dribble. He drew the contact. We've seen the refs call a lot of fouls this game so far, so he got the foul. We'll be on the line for two. Foul called on Daryl Luce's fourth foul. One more foul, and he will foul out of this game. As Ashley, call from the crowd there as he puts his first free throw up, and he will make that one. And Ashley's second free throw. Goes through as well. He's the one point of the game. He's only missed one free throw all day. Mabron looking, and he will find Santiago. Santiago thinks about taking the look and doesn't. Mabron now fakes the put up for three and loses the ball. And now, um, fan to Pony. Pony bouncing it around and cannot put it in. Ashley with the rebound. And it looks like that will be a foul called. Here we go. One foul away from the bonus. This is not a team you want to put in the bonus. That's how they're coming back in this game. They're making their three point, their uh, free throws, especially when you're only up by two. You don't want to put a team that shoots 75% from the line in the bonus. And he's getting to Zavedra. Zavedra puts that one up for two, and that one's off the rim. Luz gives it to Santiago. Santiago the pass to Mabern. Mabern puts it up for two, and he took down He's gonna It looks to me like that is called a charge on Kyle Mabern. Keekson's a little slow to get up. He's kind of chasing his head a little bit. Mabern upset with the call there. Ashley will take this in for it, Grant. He's getting a whistle. And this ball is going back to Streamwood. Looks like it either someone, either the inbounder crossed the line or it was a five-second rule there, but Mabern to loose. He swings it back to Mabry, puts it up for three, and the rim says no. Mabry will go to the line for three free throws due to being fouled behind the arc. Mabry, no free throw attempts today, but he does have 18 points in the game. He's eight for 11 to all tournament in the line. And he'll put his first three. The second one will also go through, extending Stewart's lead to four, and giving him 20 points on the day. And puts that one off the, free, off the rim, as Streamwood will get possession back of this one. Now loose with it behind the arc to Santiago. Santiago almost drives in, doesn't fan. Now to Mabron. Mabern fan cross, and Mabern puts it up for three. That one's through. That will be the 23rd point of the game for Mabern. This guy's dropping threes like a candy out there. They're candy? No, 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 no. That one was a little, <laughs> I'll even admit that one was a little off. Savedra's putback does not make it, and there's a fight for the ball as Cody comes out. And crowd's calling Grant's for an crowd. over and back. They want that foul called, and they do not get it as Mabern takes it up for three. That one off the rim and out. So Mabern's going to the line again for three shots. 38 seconds left in the third. Streamwood leads by seven as Mabern, an impressive day for him so far. He'll look to add three more. He makes the first. Three for four on the day. Maven from the free throw line. He'll get a couple more tries here. And the second one rings out. Nikhil, substitution. Excuse me. That is Carter K comes back in and Randall Holm come back in for Grant. Maven second, another third free throw rather goes off. As Ashley with a deep pass to Kay. Kay back to Ashley, pass a little too hot to handle, and that one will go out. And that will be Streamwood's ball. It's like Ashley was looking more at the at the hoop than the ball, just lets it hit off his fingers. I mean, maybe it was a little 
too far behind them as a pass. But, you know, if you get your hand on it, it should be caught. Mabrin to Coney now. Coney looking. Mabrin. Mabrin with the pass to Coney. Coney gives it back to Mabrin. Mabrin drives in and gives a pass to Fan, and that one is out on Grant. Randall Holm got a hand on that one. And this one remains to its ball. Let's see if they're going to try to do an inbounds play where Mabram will pass it to someone and he'll go right back for the three. Well, I guess I was wrong. But. Santiago did not take that, that opportunity. Coney up for three. That one's through. At the buzzer. At the buzzer of the third quarter, the crowd celebrating there as the Sabres on top of the Bulldogs at the end of the third quarter, 65 to 54. We'll be back after a quick message. The following sports broadcast made possible. And we are back for some fourth quarter basketball here in the Jacobs High School gym. Fourth quarter action sponsored, of course, by Rosen Hyundai of Algonquin. Looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time. Shop online at RosenHyundai.com. And Grant will have this ball to start the fourth quarter. They trail by 11 in this game. And Ashley will get the ball to Keeskin. Keeskin, Coney on the steal, and that one rolls a little bit as he picks it up. Coney thought high in the back pass to no one. Loose man just to get it. Mabron up for three. That one goes off, and Coney flings it back to Mabron. Mabron looking for a place to go with the ball and cannot find it. You might start seeing Streamwood try to take longer possessions, especially this late. Mabron goes up for two, and that one's through, and it looks like we will get an and one play here for Mabron. Mabron on fire today, 26 points for Kyle Mabron of the Sabres, and he will get a chance to make it 27. Jake, Jacob Strong coming into the game for Andrew Fan. Four for seven on the day from the line. As Holm taking it back for Grant. Grant to Keeskin. Keeskin finds Ashley open for three, and he cannot put that one through. As Streamer will take it back, Coney now with it to Strong. And that looks like that will be a yeah, blocking foul. Blocking foul. Strong collided with number 32, Carter K. Grant. Even with it, Coney tries to put it up immediately and looked like it was going to bounce in but bounced out. And, and an offensive like pushing foul. Graham will be sent to the line here. Keeskin, number 22. How's he been on the day for free throws? Taken no, I don't think he's taken any free throws. I have none on my score sheet. So this looks to be his first attempt. 20 points on the day. Off the back of the rim. And Pedrosian actually knocks over the cart as he falls out of bounds. No, I didn't actually see what happened. I thought that was him just slamming his hand on the ground. No, the cart got knocked over and spilled the um, Gatorade cooler. And now, Mabram looks strong. Strong Santiago. Santiago puts it up for three, and that one goes off the back of the rim. Loose with the rebound, bouncing around a little bit as Coney takes it. And Coney all the way across court to Mabron. Streamer trying to get something going here. As Mabron 
finds collided by two Grand players, and this ball goes back to Grant. Grant to Keeskin. Ashley now with it. And a little bit of fancy footwork for it, puts that one up for two. It's a nice little turnaround fade for Mikhail Ashley. It's his first two points of the fourth quarter. Mabry will try and drive in, and him and Kay of Graham will end up on the ground. We have a replay here of um, Luke Pedrosi and Grant taking a spill into the Gatorade cart there. Boom. <laughs> Swing right down. <laughs> As Mavern lines up four for seven from the free throw line today, he's had plenty of chances. We'll try to add to his already impressive point total. And that one bounces out. Perfect 50% on the day with that one. And he will get a chance at a ninth attempt of the game. They're five for nine on the day, Mabron. As Bedrosian takes the inbound play for Grant, gives it to Holm. Holm to Bedrosian. Bedrosian to Ashley. Little hand off there. Ashley finds Holm underneath. Holm goes up and puts that one through for two. As Grant trails by 11 in this game. Mabron coming back the other way. Mabron puts that one up for two. Holm. I don't know if he got a hand on it, but he definitely went up to block it as Mabron's shot misses. And Bedrosian puts that one up to two. Cutting Streamwood's lead to nine with six minutes to play in the fourth quarter. But you saw on that, that block over in the Streamwood side, the bench sort of stood up, had their hands up. Maybe they thought it was a, a, a sort of goaltending call there, as you've seen certain kinds, if you were to like hit the backboard and it would interfere with the way the ball is going, they might give you the goaltending. But a way to capitalize on that turnover there. Jersey in here. Free throw hits the rim. As Ashley tries to put it up, but there is a whistle. Ashley clearly upset with the call there. It looks like this will be Streamlit's ball. So Ashley will be sent to the line, actually, next week. He's only missed one free throw from the line all day. They're now in the double bonus, they'll have two free throws. Put, or, I'm sorry, Ashley puts his first free throw through. Try saying that five times fast. <laughs> and this is how, this is how Grant could come back in this game. They capitalize on the free throws. We've seen Streamwood be a very physical team. Now with any foul giving any Grant player guaranteed two chances from the line. Pony up for three here, and that one goes over the net, and Mabram puts. Puts that one back up for two. As there is a timeout called first from Streamwood, I believe. Coach on Streamwood clearly upset. And this timeout brought to you by our good friend Tom the Plumber. Tom the Plumber Inc., a family owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. Visit Tom Plummer online at TomPlummerInc.com. I mean, before the time, when the time it was called, you saw Streamwood's coach arguing with one of the refs saying, hey, when when Mabram went up, someone was grabbing his arm or so, some kind of physical contact there. While it was going on, he's yelling at the refs. The fans are telling, are chanting for the refs to tee him up. You know, I'm a technical on that, but refs didn't give in. And this break here, Streamwood ahead by nine with 5.45 left in the fourth. Patrick, what do you want to see Grant do more of to cut this lead? Well, you, Streamwood at some point, especially in the last, let's say, about minute, has struggled a little bit from behind the yard. They're trying to work their way in. Try to get try to get some more defensive stops on Streamwood when they're driving in. And, I mean, you've scored all points other than two free throws from driving into the hoop. If you're Grant, Force your way in, make the layups, try to draw contact. Because if you can draw contact and you make the layup, you'll have an add one chance. But if you just draw contact and miss it, you're guaranteed for two free throws, no matter what. And Ashley will take it in for Grant. Grant playing spread out here with Carter K with the ball. Pink down, we will get a whistle. 
Holm said he was open. He's about to drive in and take the shot. It's Carter K. He took one too many steps after he stopped his dribble. Got the travel call. A costly turnover for Grant. And Mayburn will take it for Streamwood. Looking. And he will drive it himself. Gives the pass to Santiago. Santiago with an athletic play. They called that out of bounds. It looked like he stayed in the me but maybe the tip of his toe got out of bounds. Yeah, it was a pretty close call to call it out of bounds. I mean, he looked like he was a bit in. Now, maybe part of the shoe was out, as they are wearing kind of grayish-white shoes, and it'll be easier to tell from the refs due to the, the brown line. But, I mean, this, you don't want to turn the ball over late. Ashley with some contact there with Santiago, and he will get another whistle at half court. Yeah, Streamwood has Grant in the double bonus. Keep the fouls to a minimum. Because a couple a couple free throws here and there in this game is really close. And Ashley, he doesn't miss many free throws. He puts that one through. Again, only missed one all game. And two all tournament. And Ashley's next free throw is off. And Strong will take that. He will go to the ground as that ball is ruled out of bounds. And Grant will take this, in, I'm sorry, Streamwood will take this. In. A little luck there for, for the Sabres as the ball hit the ref, kept the ball in play. It would have been Grant ball. So they catch a lucky break. Mabern with it. Mabern tries to put that one up and he will go to the line as the foul is called on Grant. This puts Streamwood in the bonus. They'll have the one and one. From here on out, up until actually they have two shots because it was a shooting foul, so the one and one is, doesn't occur here. And maybe with another miss. He is five for ten from the line today. A lot of free throw chances for Mabern. Mabern that one also off the rim. And Kieske with a deep pass to Madrosi. Madrosi puts that one up for two. As Grant cuts Streamwood's lead to six, Mabern coming back the other way. Well, Bedrosian's got to be careful on defense. He's got four fouls. Tony with the layup there. That's that one. Here. There's nobody home down low for Grant. Left Tony wide open. He's going to find K wide open for three. That went off the rim. Ashley takes it. And the putback is good by Ashley. Streamwood will try to respond here strong with it now. Loses the ball. They're going to call that out of bounds on Streamwood. As Strong got tied up between Keeskin and Kay. And lost the basketball. I'm sorry, this is called out on Grant. And you're, you're going to see this a lot. Keeskin just went out of the game again. They're probably going to keep him out on defense, put him back in in some chances on offense due to him having four fouls. Mayburn with it. And he will lose the ball. And we will get Mayburn coming to the line again. It's Keegan reaching a little too far, but with the bonus, it guarantees whoever is fouled at least one chance at a free throw. Six for 11 on the day, Mayburn is. Free throws. There's, Keegan, there's uh, Bedrosian, he's back in. We'll try to add to his already impressive point total. 30 in the game for Mayburn. And he will get 31. And the second one was for the And Grant trying to cut into this lead, not finding much success. He's good. He gives it underneath. Bedrosian wide open. He'll put that one through for two as Streamwood comes back the other way. Pentecost to Mayburn. That's Bedrosian's sixth point of the fourth quarter. Now he's just got to be careful on defense. Him and Pentecost are two guys that are game changers for both of these teams. Mayburn is strong, strong. Puts that one up. That's off the rim. I couldn't tell if that was for two or for three. A little contact, and Ashley will come back the other way for Grant. And that one falls out as we get a whistle. And yep. Ashley will come back to the line once again. That was a good job by Ashley to drive in. He drew the contact to put him on the line for at least the chances to make two free throws. Mayburn's fourth foul of the game. One more and he will foul out, him being a 
an impressive day already with 32 points for the Sabres. Ashley lines up, and the first free throw is through. And he will line up for a second. And Ashley puts the second free throw through. As Strewman will take this inbound play, we cut it past. The ball passes strong. And Mabron was whistled, the play was whistled dead. Mabron back to the line again. He's had a lot of attempts here, all in the second half. I mean, this is where playing physical comes back to hurt you. You don't want to force free throws, especially when you're down by four. We've seen, we've seen Mabron all game. He's been the heart and soul of this Sabre offense. You don't want to put him on the line. 7 for 13 of the day, make that 8 for 14 of the day. Had a lot of free throw attempts. And we'll put this one up. And that will be his 34th point of the game. 9 for 15 on free throws. Ashley taking it for Grant. Now to home. To Pedrosian. Pedrosian to Kiesgen. He's going to K wide open for three. That one's off the rim. And Holm will get this one back for Grant. K with an athletic play. It looked like Stream would try to get a hand on that pass, but K managed to haul it in. And now K will be sent to the line. K hasn't been on the line yet in the game. A little burst of cheers there for the, from the Grant crowd as K gets set up. And makes his first. And he will try to cut Streamwood's lead to four here with 326 left in the fourth. And he does. Streamwood now leads 77 to 73. Streamwood will get the ball here. Number three, Jalen Rio seeing his first action of the game here for Grant as Pentecost. The pass out to Coney. Pony from the range looking for a place to go, and he'll send a pass deep to Santiago. Santiago up for three. That one's off the backboard. And Holm to Streamwood's game. Games. Streamwood's three game has gone awfully silent in the most important parts of the game. And Holm looks like that will be a charge called on Holm. And Holm will draw the foul as he puts that one up for two. Oh, that's Panikos. He's gone. Panikos is fouled out of the game. Holm's Stream very excited. Streamwood loses one of their best three-point shooters for the remainder of the game. Now Holm has, not Holm, uh, Mabram has four as well. If they can get Mabram out. Pentecost still on the court here for Streamwood. Looks like there's some confusion. Miscommunication, actually. Fan will sub in for Pentecost. And Holm, line up for the end one attempt here. Puts that one through. Streamwood leads by one as they will come back the other way to try to extend that lead. Looked like a missed foul there on Jalen Rios. Streamwood was looking for that call and Mabron will be sent back to the line. I don't know if he shot that out of anger. I mean, I've Took it from half court. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised he didn't get technical on that one. Mabron. It's another free throw here. The entire He's taken up an entire row of my score sheet just with his free throws. And this timeout brought to you by Tom the Plumber. Tom the Plumber Inc. is a family owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. Visit Tom online at TomThePlumberInc.com. Now Streamwood with a two point lead here in the game. Mayburn will line up for a second free throw after this timeout. 
And Patrick, what have you seen from Grant? They've been pl they've been pulling at this lead and trying to cut away at it. And I mean, they've been they're they're capitalizing on Streamwood's mistakes. Streamwood keeps fouling them. They're in the double bonus, so they're giving they're giving Grant a chance to make at most two free throws. So players are starting to start working in, trying to draw the contact so they can head to the line. It's it's, it's quite smart actually. It's taking full advantage of everything that Streamwood's done and taking full advantage of a team that fouls quite frequently as they've been capitalizing off of these free throws. I mean, if Grant wants to do anything, they're going to try to find some way. If, if Mabram's playing in, they're going to try to draw contact from Mabram to get him out of the game. He has four fouls, and he's been hurting them all game. 35 points. Especially in a game that's only a two-point deficit. If it comes down to a three-pointer, they don't want to have Mayrum getting the ball if they're Grant. Streamwood, yes, they want to give Mayrum the ball. But if Grant can find some way to take Mayrum out of the game, it'll help. Mayrum already in foul trouble with four fouls today. Maybe that's what they need to do. He's going with the ball now for Grant. Grant, the steal by Coney. Coney puts that one up, and that one's through. A big time play by Lorenzo Coney of Streamwood to extend their lead. Well, we've seen this all game. Keegan's not that good of a ball carrier. We've seen him struggle with turnovers, losing the dribble. I mean, he's, he's definitely not someone you want to have with control of the ball. Tony deflects a pass intended for Keeskin, and it looks like they will call him out of bounds. Lorenzo Coney playing a big part of Streamwood's defensive effort to keep them in the lead at the end of this game. 2.32 left on the clock here. And Ashley, the ball he will cross the needle. And he'll get the ball to Keeskin. He's going to Ashley. That pass deflected. And Mayburn will take it. This will stay in bounds. Strong with a nice play to keep it in. Mayburn coming down. And that will be a foul called on. Looks like Kyle Mayburn. And he will foul out of this game. An impressive day for Kyle Mayburn. 35 points. And that's going to come back to hurt Streamwood. The replay of the charge here by Mabron fouled him out of the game. So okay. wait, is Carter K taking one for the team? It's gonna help him out in the long run. Now with Mabram out, there's really not that much of a big three-point shooter. Ashley puts that one up for three, and that rings around and out. And Grant Keys or Holm will go down. Very excited or upset, I can't really tell. This time out brought to you by Custom Heating and Cooling. For all your heating and cooling needs, count on Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland, featuring sales, installation, and 24-hour emergency service. Find them online at customheating.com. Custom Heating and Cooling, powered by Brian. Whatever it takes. 120 ticks left on the clock here. Two minutes exactly left. And we hear under pressure by Queen here, as Grant is under a ton of pressure to try and keep this game alive. This game, of course, for the Consolation B Bracket Championship. I'm just going to be silent as your uh, connection there occurred. <laughs> Streamwood. I'm just going to move on and pretend I never heard it. Streamwood leads 80 to 76. Patrick, Streamwood's best player fouled out of the game now. What is? What do you need to do if you're Grant? If you're Grant, you're happy. Because you know, I don't have to worry about Mayroom anymore. But, I mean, Logan, who are some of the other good three-point shooters on this team that we've seen who have made threes. And we talked about Pentecost before the game. He's been a little quiet. Three threes well, he's in the out. first He's quarter. done for us the That's game. right. He has fouled out. It's going to be Coney. You're going to see Coney made a three already in the third quarter. He's only made one, two in the fourth. I mean, Streamwood's going to have to find a new identity with the last two minutes of the game. Whether that be through Coney, whether it'll be through Strong, it'll be through someone. But they're going to need to find a way to score again now that Mabram's out. And for Grant, Try playing not that tough a defense. I mean, you don't want to get the fouls. Jersey. You don't want to put them on the line. Um, foul called on, on Luke Jersey, it seems like. That is his fourth foul. No, game. that was actually a out of bounds. Oh, was that right? Yeah, he lost his dribble. Strong to Santiago. Strong with behind the arc. Strong to Santiago. Santiago finds Torre. Torre to... Strong. Strong dancing around behind the arc. He'll find Coney. Coney driving in, puts that one up for two. And Streamwood will lead by six as he's getting to the jersey in. It's no time to panic yet for Grant. Try to drive in, get the layup, try to get a foul. Don't force anything. 
Ashley up for three, puts that one off the rim. And Ashley will grab his own rebound. And he will find Bedrosian underneath for two as Streamwood's lead is once again at four. Now you're gonna need a turnover if you're green. You're gonna find, try to find some way to stop him, maybe put him in a corner, try to intercept the pass, something. Because Streamwood's gonna try to burn out some clock here. Streamwood playing hot potato here in circles around the Grand Defenders as Torrey takes that in. And Santiago takes it now. He will pass it across to Coney. Coney will find Strong. And looks like a foul will be called, sending Strong to the line. He has three attempts on the day and has made two. Strong looking for his first points of the fourth quarter. And now we're gonna start seeing Grant. Grant's gonna start fouling. We're gonna try to keep as much clock as possible. Extreme was just gonna try to play keep away for the remainder here. I mean, they're down, they're up by four, so by no means is it a sure thing. So I don't expect them fully to take as much time as possible. I can see them doing maybe one more try to drive in, maybe set up a three if possible. But if you can drive in, get the contact, maybe try getting a three-point play, I mean, you can put this game on ice. And that second free throw by Strong will also miss. As Streamwood actually gets the ball back here, and it looks like Graham will foul again and send Strong to the line. Struggled today. The last two being misses. Two for five. Strong is for the line. I mean, you, you gotta, that's, that's probably the right guy to foul. I mean, he's been struggling. He's missed three free throws today. In this case, you want to try to get them to pass the ball to someone who can't really make free throws. And it looks like Grant's figured that out. Misses another free throw. That is his third miss of the quarter. As he will line up for another one. And that one finally goes through. As Ashley will take this ball in for Grant to keep him. Now you might see from Grant, they may try to drive in to get an easy layup and then try to stop Streamwood. I mean, you could see them take the three and they will. Ashley puts that one up for three and off the rim, and Fan with the ball in his hands as... I mean, now Sayers are going right back to the line. It's about 28 and a half seconds now, both teams in double bonus. And Fan lining up at the free throw line, his first attempt of the game and his first attempt of points of the game. And he puts that one. If he drains one more, they, they might be over at that point. Seven points, they're gonna need a three, two threes, some kind of crazy layup. If he can put this one in, it might be the end for Grant. Grant trailing by six. And he cannot put that one through, as that will be Streamwood's ball as it bounces off of Pedrosian's foot. I mean, talk about a smart, smart play by Jacoby Strong. He knew the ball was going out of bounds. He saw a Grant player there, threw it at his foot, ends up going out of bounds on Grant, keeps their possession alive. Cole almost turned that one over, but Strong will keep it, and they will foul here, send Richard Santiago to the line. He has three points in this game. Now Grant's gotta hope he misses both. If he makes one, if one, if, if one of the, if the Sabres make one free throw, the game might be over. And, that's it. and he makes the first free throw. Now you're right back, hovering over that seven point lead. And Santiago can make this eight. This one here will definitely be the last nail in the coffin. And that one misses. As and Ashley taking it back the other way, 15 seconds left on the clock. He's gonna have Keeskin. to shoot a three. He's gonna up for three, oh. a Hail Mary attempt that does not connect. Strong will take this. And it looks like he will just run out the clock here, or not, because Grant will foul. Yeah, this game's pretty much done. There's no possible way that I can think of for them scoring seven points in a row, especially sending the Sabres to the line. It was quite the effort from Grant. I mean, it was a very good game. Just delaying the inevitable. Here is struggle line up to the line. He struggled from the free throw line today. Put in three of seven attempts and he will put in the fourth. I mean, I guess you can say that his free throw shooting is simply not the strong point of his game. <laughs> it took me a second, but and he will put that next one through. As five seconds remain on the clock, he's gonna carry this down. He will put up a last second play, give his team an even 80, but it's no matter, Streamwood will win the Sabres on top of the Bulldogs, 87 to 80 the final. 
We'll be right back with an interview with Kyle Mabrin of Streamwood coming up right after this break. My name is Logan Franz, and alongside me here is Kyle Mavern of the Streamwood Savers. Kyle, you fouled out of this game enough for putting up an impressive 35 points. How does that feel to be on such a hot streak today? It feels good, but uh, I need to watch my fouls more, and none of us are going out there trying to score 30. I mean, it's a team effort. My teammates were getting me shots, all that. And now the Constellation B Championships. You mentioned the um, fouling out. You don't want to take those fouls, but... Um, how, how much do you feel you could have put up if you had stayed in the entire game? You want to give me an estimate? Uh, I could have had at least 40. I mean, I missed, I missed some free throws, a lot of free throws. But, yeah. Confident you could have put a 40. I like it. Well, stream with the Constellation B Bracket Champions. Congratulations, Kyle. Thank you. And the Constellation B Championship is Streamwood Tops Grant 85 to 80. We'll be back with the Constellation A Bracket Championship right after this. Stay tuned. The following sports broadcast made possible by support from the following. The Bear Family McDonald's, proud supporters of our community since 1967. Stop by one of their 30 area McDonald's restaurants today. Custom Heating and Cooling of Chicagoland. Featuring sales, installation, and 24-hour emergency service. Find them online at customheating.com. Custom Heating and Cooling, powered by Bryant. Whatever it takes. Rosen Hyundai of Algonquin. Looking for a brand new Hyundai or certified pre-owned? Save time. Shop online at rosenhyundai.com. Tom the Plumber is a family-owned and operated company committed to providing plumbing service and installations of the highest quality and craftsmanship. Tom the Plumber, honest and affordable. Visit Tom online at TomThePlumberInc.com. 
and Daryl Barnes Photography. For all your photographic needs, senior portraits, family portraits, sports, and more, visit Daryl online at darylbarnes.com.